Welcome back everyone, CapKG here along with Jordy. Hey! And we are back to continue with Ruby, Volume 6. Yes! We are up yes. to yes. Chapter 3, Episode 3. I'm not sure what what we're going with anymore. I'm if there's so still chapters, excited. there are episodes now, because Rooster so Teeth keeps listening to them as episodes. Either way, yeah, they're great. Volume 6 is off so to good. a tremendous start. By far my favorite so far. Yeah. Of a start for a chapter. So good. For volume, yeah, I agree. Um, this is like volume three, chapter six is like that moment where you're like, holy shit, shit's getting real. Like once it's we get to volume three, chapter six, it just like hits the accelerator shit, and doesn't man. stop, right? Yeah, so good. And it feels like they did that from ch episode one, chapter one. It's like, we're going full throttle here. Oh, it's like overwhelmingly exciting. Like you yeah. just feel like you're on a roller coaster being going 70 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so <laughs> we've just been finding out a lot. We've been finding out that Ospin really is a shady ass motherfucker. No, he is not. <laughs> and Jordy's still convinced he's no, not. No, he's not. Um, but he's lying left and right. <laughs> for good reasons. For good reasons. So speaking of lying for good reasons, um, part of the discussion among the community over the last week was how Yang is being very hypocritical because she's writing Ospin about lying and not telling the truth. But when she got back from the vault in, in volume five at the end of it and Crow asked her about Raven, she just said Raven was gone. She didn't say, oh, she was there. She opened the door. She gave us the relic. She didn't mention she was a spring maiden. She didn't say anything about that. She just said she made it sound like Raven was just gone when she got down there. But didn't Yang know that they knew the rest of the stuff? Mm hmm. No one knew anything that happened down there. She said when she got down there, Bernal was dead, Cinder was gone, and so was Raven. And she made it seem like the door was just open and she just walked in and took the relic. No one knows that Raven's the Spring Maiden. Right? Except for Yang. She's the shady ass motherfucker! Okay, at least you agree with that. Yeah! Okay. Yang, get off your high horse! Yeah, so it's kind of an interesting. I didn't think about that, but Ooh, people have brought that up I in the community. I didn't either. Right, that Yang's kind of oh. being a hypocrite here. She's the one that's writing Ospin the hardest yeah. about this, and yet she's got her own secrets. <gasps> it's an interesting Shady little chick. Yeah. Ooh. All right. This chapter. It's already, it's already! <laughs> it's 26 minutes and 35 seconds, which is. I it's expected sick. a short. I thought it was going to be a short one because I thought this is going to be maybe a flashback episode. And so a flashback might be a little quicker. It might just be like the story of Salem and Ospin. That might be it. I hope that's what we get. Like, that's the main thing I'll say first. Please, Please don't pull volume five where, Please. oh, we'll get there in an episode. Fudge, right? no. Right? <laughs> Please. I need to know. I need to know what's happening here. Yes. I'm pretty confident we will because this is okay. volume six and they seem to be full throttle going down this like we just said. Okay. Oh, please. The other thing we haven't seen yet, so I want to see that backstory. Two, I want to see Salem, like Salem current time. Yeah. Mercury, Emerald. We haven't gotten them yet in this volume. I'd like to see them, uh, see what they're up to. Yeah. I got to say, one last thought before we jump in, because I was thinking about this this morning. I really like when they're going to do this flashback, the way they're doing it, I really appreciate it. Because remember the Cinder flashback back in Volume 3? The flashback episode, we had kind of like these flashes of how Cinder got her group, how she found Emerald, how she found Mercury, all that stuff. But it was like a pure flashback episode. Everything was taking place in the past. It's really clever and creative the way Miles and the writing team wrote this one. That our characters are like popping in there. And the story's like being told around them and they kind of get to walk around and look at it. You know, like Ruby yeah. walked up to Salem and that kind of like That's a really cool way to like not take away our characters just because you're doing a flashback. Very true. It's really cool. Yeah, very true. Good point. Any other thoughts? You just ready to jump in? <sighs> if we talked I'm enough. ready! <laughs> All right, here we go. Volume 6, Episode 3. This one is called The Lost Fable. So <gasps> let's go. Oh, The Lost Fable. I just realized something. Fairy what? tales are fables. Stories. The lost oh, one. The one that that's... apparently no one knows about. Oh, yes. So good. Again, applause there. All right, let's go. Volume 6, Chapter 3. <laughs> I'm getting... Oh my gosh, that was the cutest <laughs> Camille. I've never seen you do that. I know, dude. Volume 6 is just... <laughs> I'm so pumped. Fucking coolest cartoon ever! 
I love this intro. The more I watch this, and I've been watching reactions and all that stuff, I'm really loving this intro. Yeah? Yeah. The song, just the intro. John's sword pop or too. shield popping open there. I feel like it's, it just feels like a story that's worth it now. You know what I mean? It's It feels like... Or the way that they're portraying it in this new intro. It's worth that. There is so much going on. True. And it's not really giving anything away because there's going to be so much behind it that makes that yeah. happen. Neo. Neo reveal this episode, please. I can wait till next time, but please reveal Neo. Confirm the theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love how Salem there and you got Jin smoke that kind of covers her up. Ooh, wow. So good. Wow, wow. Now that we know good about point. it. Wow. Show me, show me, show me. Yeah, that's in their fighting. I love these transitions here. I think I mentioned this last time, but really good this song is really good yeah i love that ending it's like we're rising like the moon yeah Ooh. yeah i can't wait to hear the full version of that I... all right here we go oh we're starting with gin okay away by her cruel father salem was a girl who desired but one thing freedom she lived in a time when kings and their kings were Rapunzel. plentiful, she's when so men and women were capable of greatness, and magic was a gift from the gods that all could wield. What? And Everyone had magic? She sat within her tower. So Ospin wasn't something special. Until one day, a legendary hero came to brave the challenges within the tower's walls. The people of the lands knew him as Ozma. Ozma. Unlike those who had come before, this warrior was not driven by the prize of the young maiden's hand. He fought only for righteousness, and his pure heart and courageous soul prevailed. Pure hearted. Oh, that's cool. They he rescues her. The wretched <gasps> fortress. And yet, something bound them together. Ozma had been ready to give his life for justice countless times, but now saw a woman worth saving it for. And Salem, to her they surprise, are lovers. found her freedom not in the outside world she had yearned for, but in the eyes of the man that had saved her. So, where should we go now? Wherever you'd like. The two fell deeply in love, oh. planned adventures around the world, and lived happily ever after. Well, that's a sweet story. Where does it go wrong? At least, that's what should have been. Ozma, the infallible hero of legend, fell ill. And where all of the beasts and blades of the world had fallen short, a single sickness prevailed. <gasps> oh! How could the gods let this happen? Hmm. The gods, brothers of light and oh. darkness, creation and destruction. Salem prayed they would see the injustice that had befallen her love and make things right. Oh. Uh, the domain of light was a sacred place. What? It was here the elder brother dwelled beside his fountain of life and creation. It was here. This is when the gods were still on remnant. Would fall to ruin. Okay. The domain of light, elder brother. This is cool. This looks I... really pretty. Wow. This is there's so much going on. Or there's so much information being shared. Mm -hmm. I'm like so focused. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. <laughs> that looks cool. Please. Is that the God of Light? Back to me. I understand your pain, but you demand of me that which I cannot make so. Life and death 
are part of a delicate balance. So... you won't do it, then? To disrupt the cycle of... Th that's not fair. That's not fair! Uh-oh. Maybe she's the one who did Let something to the gods. Him rest. I think she goes well, to the other brother serious. for help. Yep. I could see that. Kicked her out of his domain. No. What did he say to her? May you find the rest? Let him rest. Oh. Because there's a delicate balance. Oh. None dare to enter his home. As men knew what monstrosities emerged from his blackened pools of annihilation. I think I have an idea what happened. And so I'm starting to get some thoughts too. The Dark Lord's surprise Maybe when he found a lone Ospen isn't as shady. Ew! 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 It's like the Nakalavi. It's the same kind of bendy. There's Grim. Understood it yep. well. She told him of her loss and professed that she knew only he could answer her prayers, all while careful to make Sucker. no mention of his elder. Rise, child, mm -hmm. and let your faith in me be rewarded. Literally sold her soul to Satan. Upset the balance. He's he's gonna be upset with her, maybe. Maybe. Oh ho ho ho! What have you done? I have done what I please, brother. You may bask in the powers of creation, but you do not owe. Are the gods gonna fight? That would be this sick. Is not creation. Do not lecture me. Oh. <laughs> I will do what I must to maintain order. He's gonna try to kill him again. And take him away, basically. No! No! What did you do? Bring him back! You dare enter my domain and show such disrespect! Osma! I am abiding by the He's like, what's going on? Rules <laughs> that I now see were ever in your favor. And yet the dead mortal comes to pray at my feet before oh, what? to lay your judgment upon me. What is going on in Ruby right now? This is so cool and different. This is so different than anything I thought was gonna happen. I know we have <laughs> but I have Is that the dragon in the um Mistral train Same station? Cannot be sent for her. This woman came to you only after I denied her pleas. Pleas that would have disrupted the balance that you and I created. Together. Then it seems I owe you an apology. Allow me to correct my mistake. No! What? You. What? You monsters! Give him back to me! Give him back! What is. What? Okay, so she got thrown from her back into the God of Light's domain. When you first came to me, I did pity you. But it is clear now that your selfishness and arrogance have led you astray. What did you do to me? I have made you immortal. Immortal? You cannot die. What? You cannot be with your beloved. So, so long, long as this world turns, you shall walk its face. Oh. You must learn the importance of life and death. Wait, Only how did... then may you rest. How did Ospin get the same curse? Salem was a prisoner once again. Her fruitless attempts to reunite with Ozma eventually became nothing more than acts of spite and defiance against the gods. But perhaps...
Perhaps the gods were not as powerful as they seemed. She had lied to them, turned them against one another. They True. were fallible. If she were to turn humanity yeah, they almost against beat on each other. darkness, she could rid herself of their curse. Or at the very least, she could make them suffer. <laughs> Oh! Salem from one kingdom yep. to another, telling tales of how she stole immortality from the gods, welcomed any swordsman to cut her down, and demonstrated her powers. With the kings and queens in awe, she pulled them deeper into her scheme. Wow, she, she got dark. Them yeah, of seriously. Time when they would no longer have to watch their loved ones wither and die. I can when see how the gods are going to be like regretting this. For themselves, and in turn perfect their own design. <laughs> All they needed to do was destroy their old masters. The gods had hoped Overthrow that Sailor would learn from her eternal curse. And she did. She learned that the hearts of men are easily swayed. Mm-hmm. Swayed by power. Mortality. Who has led you down this path? Oh, she has balls. Right? <laughs> they gave the gift, they could take it away, couldn't they? And they all have magic, still. Wow. Your good luck. My own gift to them. Used against me. Ah. There, bye bye magic. Uh huh. Whoa, this is epic. Okay, he literally just obliterated everyone. No. Destruction. You thought there was no greater punishment we could bestow upon you? I'll come back. I'll tell the rest of the world of this massacre. Build a new army. You do not understand. There is no one left. You are all that remains of humanity. This planet a new punishment. Here's a beautiful experiment. But it is merely a remnant of what it once was. We will learn from this failure. I hope that you will learn from yours. That's why it's called remnant. No, you can't leave. The remnant you of what it once leave. was. Still demanding things of your creators. Like you said, she has balls. When the gods the left, fuck? they Whoa. went right through the moon. Whoa! So cool! Holy shite! Right? She's gotta feel awful right now. Once again, <laughs> no kidding. Salem was alone. She cursed the gods. She cursed the universe. She cursed everything. Everything but herself. She wandered How the did she become the planet, awaiting a death that would yeah. never come. Until fate led her back to the land of darkness. This was it. This had to be it. The brothers grim, the pools of black that continued to give rise to horrific nightmares. If the fountain of life granted her immortality, then surely the pools of Grimm would finally take it away. Oh! She was wrong. She hoped this would actually kill her, but this is probably what turned her into a This force ground. of pure destruction could not destroy a being of infinite life. Instead, it created a being of infinite life with a desire for pure destruction. Damn. Okay, so it changed her. her adversary. Not just into a grim, but into a creature of darkness. Damn. Osma. And the God of Light's gonna return him. We are we write this wrong, realms. probably. I'm afraid a 
tragedy has befallen your home at the hands of my brother. We have chosen to depart this world, but in our absence, I would like to offer you the chance to return to it. I... don't understand. Mankind is no more, yet your world remains, and in time, your kind will grow to walk its face once again. However, without our presence, they will be but a fraction of what they once were. Creation, destruction, choice, and knowledge were the ideals upon which humanity was made. Now, I leave them behind with the hope that you that will to remake crowns. If brought together, these four relics will summon my brother and I back to your world, and humanity will be judged. If your kind has that's why she wants the relics. With one another and set aside their differences. You must have learned that secret. Shall once again oh! You, and humanity will be made whole again. But if your kind is unchanged, if you demand our blessings while still fighting amongst yourselves, then man will be found irredeemable, and your world will be wiped from existence. Oh! Until your task is complete, you will reincarnate. Dang. But in a manner that ensures you are never alone I'm sorry but that world just isn't as dear to me without her if I may I'd rather return to the afterlife to see Salem you will not find her there you mean she isn't gone Salem lives but the woman you hold dear in your memories is gone heed this warning where you seek comfort you will only find pain. Oh gosh. So, will you? I'll do it. He's got to basically well. destroy what he loved. Our creation rests within your hands. And no pressure. No pressure whatsoever. Holy and cow. So, Ozma was reborn. Does he hope to like change her? Good question. Or bring her back? Where am I? That's him now. I, oh, dude. That's him now. Dude, that was not even... No. <laughs> that's why he's such a good Thank fighter, you. though. I mean, he was a legendary Please, hero. Tell me your name. Who are you? He didn't know. Ozma had found himself in a world completely unfamiliar to him. Cities looked different. Creatures known as the Faunus bore fangs and claws and were locked away in cages. And without the blessing of the gods, no one could perform magic like mankind was once capable of. No one but himself hmm. and a woman known as the Witch. During his okay. years of travel, he heard the same frightened whispers that spoke of a terrifying sorceress who commanded dark powers in the wilds among the beasts and monsters. Ozma was convinced that this witch was Salem and decided he needed to see what she had become. Okay. I'm not talking much because this is super interesting. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not either because I can't hear it compared it to how magic, loud Camille is. So I'm stronger. really trying to listen. But in that moment, the two knew exactly who it was that stood before them. <gasps> what do we do now? He doesn't look as evil like here. As Salem and Ozma recounted and she's still kind the events of which brought them back together, each withheld parts of their story. Salem, fearing Ozma would reject her, blamed the end of the world on the gods. Ozma, still unsure of where the truth lay, kept his task and the relics a secret. Though time passed and all seemed well, Ozma's conversation with the god of light still lingered in his mind. He had found happiness, but humanity seemed more divided than ever before. Are you surprised? This world is quite literally godless. These humans have no one to guide them. Perhaps that's all they need. 
What are you saying? We could become the gods of this world. Our powers surpass all others. Our souls transcend death. We can mold these lands into whatever we want. What you want. Create the paradise that the old gods could not. That doesn't sound good. The hearts no. of men are easily swayed. Oh, and he's a man. Yeah. Oh. Oh, man. Maybe this is really the part of the story he's hiding. What? Oh. Oh. Well, we're saving you. Worship us, of course. Yeah. The two amassed a following. That following grew into a prosperous kingdom. And at the head of that kingdom blossomed a family. Oh! What? He. He done the thing with the grimified person? Hmm. Is she still a little creepy to look at? Yeah. Uh, okay. Whatever gets you going. <laughs> Are Doesn't she sure seem this is right? A still a little evil? You said yeah. we needed to bring humanity together. In order to do that, we have to spread our word and destroy those who will deny it. <gasps> what are we doing? <gasps> yes, please let your inner voice speak to you. This isn't what he asked of me. What did you say? <gasps> Oh no. Mother, Don't Mother, reveal too much. Look. It was a miracle. Wait a minute. Their children That's could Jin. perform magic. But what should what? have been a joyous occasion was short lived. That's definitely Jin. He what did he do? Salem take his own kids and turn them into the relics? The true reason the God of Light had brought him back. The relics that lay scattered around the world. And the day of judgment he had been told to prepare for. Don't you see? None of that matters anymore. Why spend our lives trying to redeem these humans when we can replace them with what they could never be? What? It is interesting that their children could use magic even though magic's supposed to be gone. What? Mommy? Yeah, he's trying to sneak them out. Right. What are all the children? No way. No way. <gasps> he can't die, but he can, even though he comes back. We finally have freedom. Mm -hmm. Thus began a long and painful cycle of death and rebirth for Ozma. Some lives were spent in mourning. Many were spent attempting to forget it all. But Whoa. no matter what, his mind would eventually turn back to the task I like he had how been the burdened with. Cain evolved. And as the centuries went on, Ozma began to learn the importance of living with the souls with which he had been paired. But no matter where or how he lived, her presence was always felt. Ooh, that's dark. If humanity were ever to stand a chance of being united, one thing was clear. He had to destroy Salem. Mm -hmm. Knowing he could never rid the world of her through any mortal means, Ozma sought out the power of the relics. Armed with my knowledge, he believed he could fulfill his promise to the God of Light. Wow. Where are the other relics? Never mind. He asked he just looked questions. similar. What powers do they possess? And though I gave him my answers. How do I destroy Salem? 
Not all of them were to his liking. You can't. Huh. Of course. If she's immortal, how do you destroy something that's immortal? But what? But what? But 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 but. but. <laughs> wow, I did not expect that whole episode to be focused just on that story. Wow. Okay. I don't even know where to begin to unpack this. Holy crap. I will apologize, you guys. I There's some technical difficulties I'm still having. I can't hear the episode very well. So I couldn't hear what they were saying very well. So I was so fixated on what they were trying to say and every time Camille spoke I couldn't hear any of it oh yeah blame so, me <laughs> no 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 just because something's wrong with my microphone so I'm sorry if I was just so fixated you guys I was just really trying to hear all the information holy okay so that was cow. a lot different than what I expected because, okay, I kind of expected the whole Aspen Salem lovers thing, right? I think we expected that angle. Right. Based on last episode. But I thought it was more like she broke his heart, he got pissed off, turned her into Ugh. Grim with his magic kind of thing. The whole, this was back when the gods were still on Remnant, everyone had magic, she went directly to the gods kind of thing. Was like, that was way Whoa. out of anything I would have expected for this episode. I, yeah. Absolutely. I did not expect that at all. Yeah. So <coughs> dying. So different. Mm -hmm. And so outside the box. And so beautifully done. Yes. Like the the brothers and the way they were portrayed and everything. And yep. just holy crap. And the whole idea of them, they once lived on Earth. We <laughs> kind of knew that. Oh, because. Never mind. Crow said that um, that he had a story, you know, before the gods abandoned Remnant or whatever. So, and that's when he was telling them about the how humanity and the Grim came to be. So we kind of knew that we knew they abandoned, which the I guess maybe that wasn't the same as knowing they lived there, but because you could take abandoned as they just don't care about what's going on on Remnant anymore, and they could have still been, like, celestial beings living in, like, a heaven type thing. Right, so I guess, right, yeah, right. it's true, they could have been, but it does seem like they were right on Remnant. Oh! The domains themselves were there. She now, Salem, present day, resides in what was the God of Darkness's domain. That's where the pools that spawn the Grim are. That, so now that makes sense, is why that is the way it is. That's so crazy. I'm so overwhelmed with knowledge. Holy cow. But, but going back to the brothers really quick, you're right. The way they're portrayed, very cool. Because portraying celestial beings yeah. is very difficult. Yes. How do you portray a god of some sort? Uh-huh. I think they nailed it. I think they did a really good job. Whoa. There were so many things where I was like, wait, can we pause? I have a question. <laughs> right. Because I have, there's so much, like, I don't quite understand and I want to appreciate the story. I like the fact that Salem was the one that, like, she got turned. Because when you mm -hmm. really care for someone, even though it's not going the way you want it, you do find yourself doing things you don't expect or thinking the way you don't right. expect you would or like falling in love with someone can really make you do things you don't expect you would do. Mm -hmm. So that really changed her. And I mean, the fact that she was so locked up for so long from the very beginning, that really rooted, that really planted a seed of pure like hatred for feeling mm -hmm. Trapped. Trapped. And alone. Yes. Yes. And that sprouted evil. I mean, her transformation from basically being like a Rapunzel, locked away in a tower, and then she needed to be freed, and Ozma comes along and frees her, and rescues her, and all that stuff. And then him dying, and like her transformation from being someone who just loves uh -huh. and cares to going to the gods in desperation 
having that brought, given back to her, then taken away, then given back, then taken away again. <laughs> Sorry, that makes <laughs> me laugh. <laughs> and then just realizing, like, screw you, gods. And just, like, I mean, recognizing their weakness, the transformation it, of trying to manipulate the gods now and rising humanity against them. It just makes sense. Yeah. The transformation was just very fluid, the way they showed it. It wasn't just, like, some, like, that's illogical. It, they, they did it in a very logical path. There, you can see how someone would go from where yeah. she was to the point she's at now. And that's awesome. Wow. Which is kind of eerie, if you think about it. Because that shows we all have a little bit of wickedness in us. Like, yeah. we can relate to that somewhat. Mm -hmm. What I don't quite understand is I wanted, I think, in some way, I wanted to think that there was still some good in her. Mm -hmm. Because she was like, well, we can, we can help them and save them. And we can create a better world for them. Even though it's corrupt. Okay, so she might have had good intention ish, yeah. but then it changed into we have to spread our word by bringing destruction to I those don't, who don't believe them or who oppose them, basically. How who could don't she see their quite, way. How could she quite under see that that was what she once said? I think so. She, when she tried to kill herself by jumping into the pool of. Grim soup poop, whatever, the poopy water. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, when she got transformed from being pure human to being this grimified human, I think, you know, it said it created her into a creature of darkness. So any good intentions she had are just twisted. It, oh, yeah. You and know? it's actually pure evil in right. the core. Yep. Oh, uh, and then... Was he going back when he first got on the earth and he was like, what's your name? And he was like this. And what did Hector? It's not his name, but I'm just Oscar. <laughs> yeah. Hector. What, <laughs> what did he say? He didn't know. He doesn't know. So why is that a big thing? Because I think the assumption that I can have to rewatch it to catch everything. But I think it was just that. When he got brought back, he really had no idea who he got brought back as. He wasn't himself. So why is that a big issue? Why was he like, oh, he didn't know. Why is that a big thing? He, I don't think he knew that he was Ozma. Like, I think, I think that was that weird thing where he was just like this blended different thing. Like, that's the way I view it, at least. Like, so like, every reincarnation of Ozpin... He's never truly, like, Ospin the way he was. He's always taking something from the life he's taking over. And so I think in that moment, that guy, just, he wasn't Ozma and he wasn't whoever he was. He was just a blending of that. It was just something different. So he didn't know what he was. Oh, I see. But he does and remember think, that he is part Ozma and part Yeah, I think that's just person. something that maybe oh, happens I over see. time. Like, you know, that voice in your head. And I think maybe for Oscar, it's a relation because maybe Oscar can relate to the feeling. Oh, right? yeah. I, uh... And that's how I take it at initial viewing. Thank you. That does help me understand. Um, I have another question. So now at the end, the gist is he realizes he can't defeat Salem. Mm -hmm. So he needs to unite. Yeah, no, 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 no. Why did he think he just needed to defeat Salem? Because what the goal is... Basically, there's going to be a judgment day. He yes. needs to collect all the all the things. Why? And that's wait. Hold on. Are they coming back before he collects all the things, or he has to collect all the things? When he collects, when all the relics are collected, that's basically the signal to the god. From my understanding, it's a signal to the gods to return to remnant. And when they return to remnant, they will judge humanity whether they oh. have basically learned from their wrongs or not. So why does he think? See, okay. Which, that's kind of hard. There's a lot. Hold on. There's a lot going on. Why did... So that's got to be hard on Ozpin to, like... Or Ozma, whatever. Have to, like, see Salem. Like, all over the place. Even though he's, like, having wifeys with different lives. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, that's kind of bittersweet. Um, he's but then on. why does... Well, yeah. Yes. You're, tr you're right. Why does he think that defeating Salem is what he needs to do? To unite, that's not what he needs to do. Because he needs to, like, 
unite mankind to see evil as evil and good for good. He doesn't need to defeat evil so they'll all be good. Right. Is that what he learned in the end? Is that what they're saying? Maybe. I, maybe that's a kind of a challenge of has Ospin really learned and realized that? Like, it's one thing to know it. It's another thing to, like, realize it, I guess. You know, intellectual knowledge versus actionable knowledge. Um, but you're right. Like, I think the way to defeat Salem, in a sense, is the, the answer to the question was, how, how can I defeat Salem, right? I think it was the way he asked the question. And he the can't. I, the gods would have to defeat her. The gods gave her the gift of immortality. They're the ones who can take that gift away, is the way I view it. So yeah, his job is going to have to be to unite mankind. Yeah, that's what he's. That's what the god said he to do. Yeah. And, Not... but Sorry. again, his. I think he looks at what mankind is, and he doesn't have hope in mankind, right? He because remember, think about Ospin, Oscar Ospin album. When he talks about there is good in humanity. You know, people can come together, all that stuff. But then there was that, you asked this question, I think it was after last episode, where, was it Ruby who said, so that whole thing about trusting humanity or whatever, you know, like, she kind of questioned, is he just kind of saying that for everyone else and not for himself? Because I don't think Ospin, after seeing everything and everything mankind has gone through for the thousand years or whatever that he's been reincarnated, I don't think he trusts that humanity can be united. He spouts it, he talks about it, he tries to preach it to everyone else, but I don't think he believes it, and that's why he's kind of taking it upon himself to try to defeat Salem himself. Because she's the divisive force. Maybe he views her as a... That's another idea. He views her as a divisive force. She's the one creating, sowing destruction among... and chaos among mankind. So maybe he thinks if she's removed, then mankind would finally be united. And then he could bring the gods back and end his curse. I don't buy that. I don't think so. I think Ospin, at the time, he thought he was so surprised at the different type of world that he came into, mm -hmm. and he was so shocked at what it had become, become. He was in doubt. He was like, can they really be united? Like, at the time, because he was like, I don't right. know this world. I don't know these people. Can they be really united and i think after the many lives that he's had and be reincarnated as he believes that they can because he's seen so much small glimpses of good still stand strong even though salem's attacking it to be mm -hmm. defeated there are still good people out there so i think he's learned that good can come out of it but i'm, I'm not quite sure if he knows what to do yet i'm not quite sure i know what he's planning to do right yeah I, I'm, I'm with you on that one i think it could be either fine coin either he's given up on humanity so there's one hope now with building up well actually rip on you so the great war happened about 70 ish years ago or something like that and that's when he set up the huntsman academies to hide the relics within the academies and they're always protected by these huntsmen now it makes sense what they're protecting them from they're protecting them from getting to salem I think it's kind of a race, Salem versus Holy Ospin. Holy cow, that's scary. Of bringing the judgment, basically. Salem gets all the relics. I don't know if Salem really would want... I'm no, I think, I think he would. I think she does. I think she wants all of them. And she wants to bring the... Be, yes, because she wants to bring them back. And if, they, if he comes back, they kill all mankind, which is what she wants. Because she wants to be freed from what she is. True. I agree with you there. But... But she's also kind of rebelled against the gods and wants to make herself into a god. Yeah, and she likes the fact that she's So why the bring the gods now? back and bring the judgment that will take away the one power you basically have over humanity right now, which is trying to be like a goddess to him? Maybe Austin's trying to get all of them together so they will come back, so they will judge him, so he, they will ultimately defeat Salem and kill everyone. Because at least they're not living in pain and fear of Salem. And they can start fresh. That's dark, but maybe he's like, it's for the better good. Okay, but is he trying to bring the relics together? Because he built academies to hide them all. So in a sense, he has I them all. He had them all. He just hid them all and put them all away. Oh, because he knew they weren't ready. <laughs> right, which is why I think the maybe the Great War 
we were talking about how that moment where maybe he realized, hey, maybe there is a chance for humanity. Maybe after the Great War, seeing everyone come and unite, you had the Amity Arena where they do their tournament and everything be built, and they all come together with the Four Kingdoms to celebrate the end of the Great War and all that stuff. He's starting to see that there is a chance for them to start coming together. And so he builds these academies, hide the relics in the hope that, hey, let's not let anyone else get to them until we're ready. Whereas ah! before, I wonder what his attitude was before, because what the hell was up with these relics for the last thousand years or however much yeah, before them? Yeah, where were then? they? Yeah. And how did Salem not get to She probably didn't know about them until recently. That's he? probably one. There was that one point where I thought that maybe, like, because his one of his children kind of had the same kind of, like, chain thing, chain uh, belt-like thing that looked kind of like what Jin has. So I had this moment that's like, wait a minute, did he, like, I was like, hey, Salem's going to get all destructive. Did he maybe, like, try to hide away his kids? And he, like, hit him into the relics or something like that with magic. That's clearly not what happened. Where Jen also are... said she was created by the God of Light, so that should have made sense. I should have remembered that. But it was just that moment where I was like, that's really similar. So. Where are the kids? Did the kids die? I think that was the implication when we saw, like, the little teddy bear that was all, like, burnt up. Oh, and my gosh. Yeah. Which makes me question a little bit. Like, if Salem really was has all this darkness in it, it felt like she was evil. And then she was kind of nice. But evil. But kind of nice. You know, like, if she's evil and she had this really in, the big intent now to create evil, why would she want to still have children and have a family and be happy? Because wouldn't you just want to create havoc? Or... I know they were saying when, they, when she saw Ozma that, like, she remembered. Mm -hmm. But still. I think she's also a manipulative bitch. And so she's taking... She knew Ozma's weaknesses, the weaknesses of man. And she kind of used it to try to f have her be, you know, her king her, next to her. Her prince, her king, or whatever. And they would rule together, right? And so if th what he wanted was love and family and all that stuff, she gave it to him. And I'm sure it felt good. Like, she likes having love, but then she wants it to go her way. Oh, that makes sense. Sorry. I yell when I'm <laughs> happy. Um, I want to point something out here. Aspen mm -hmm. is a good guy. Okay. I mean, he's flawed. <laughs> I didn't say he wasn't. He's flawed. He might not be making the right decisions for the good purpose. I never said he wasn't doing that, but he's a good guy. I kind of have to grant you that one. I, I do have to kind of grant you that one. I, I, I'm trying oh to figure God. out how I can spin it. Oh. He's still shady as fuck, though. Because... I never said he wasn't, but I, no, shady means you have bad intent. He never had bad intent. He I might still... be making the wrong decision because he's flawed, because he's human. I don't know. I still don't feel like we fully know what his intent is right now. Like, we were talking about, like, is he trying to bring the relics together? Is he trying to keep them um, away from people? Like, there's still parts of the story that we don't really know what, why, what his current motives are for what he's doing. We know his mission from the god, from the brother of light. We know where he's been through and what he's attempted to do, but what is he really trying to do right now? I know he says to de defeat Salem, but... I'm still a little torn on, kind of like you said, is he trying to defeat Salem as in bring humanity together and save humanity and defeat Salem and have the gods come back? Or is he more like, let's bring the judgment and just wipe out everything and let the gods start over? Because I think that's th that could still be an important distinction. Regardless. Regardless, he did He's not. He's a good guy. Regardless, he did not create Salem. <laughs> you guys. Sure. To hear those words come out of Camille's mouth and be like, I'm going to have to give you that one. Literally almost been friends for 10 years. I don't know if I've ever remembered him saying those words to me. And you're seeing Listen, it now. Don't glow too much. There are still like 11 <sighs> episodes left in volume six. And who knows what other secrets we may learn. This moment will stay with me for the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> All right. Um... What Holy else? crap. We touch on everything. I mean, it was pretty much just the fable the whole time, right? It was that story. Holy crap. That, oh, yep, yeah, well, Texas is here. That was crazy. Yeah. Crazy.
Loved a lot of the little arts, the way they kind of portrayed and showed things. Like I said, the gods were portrayed really cool. The way the story evolved was great. Holy cow, my mind is just like mind blown. Mm -hmm. They fucked with my mind, man. They, uh, that was good. They still have not let off the gas this volume. Holy cow! This was, in a way, a slower chapter, and since it was a lot more narrative. We were literally just told a story, but yeah, it, it feels so much like volume 3, chapter 6. It's so funny that I brought that up before we started watching this, because it feels so much like that, like, Game Changer story was just told. Oh, game changer. Holy, that's scary. Mm -hmm. If you really think about it, that's scary. Like, that's a judgment against mankind being obliterated. Yeah. That they are chasing for. The pressure and the, like, the, the chance of human mankind living is yeah. all on the girls' shoulders now. And yeah. to think what we first thought in the first season. Yeah. They're just learning how to fight monsters. Fight monsters, yeah. Holy they're shit. just monsters because they're monsters there for some reason. And now it's like, oh, uh, yeah, this is why. Oh, my gosh. Can One you thing... imagine what they're at right now? Like, what if God came down right now and he said, this is what just ha This is how it all started. Yeah. Well, I was going to say one thing I would like them to kind of go back to at some point. Probably not this volume. But now that we know the story of from Salem on. What's pre-Salem? A little bit more. Ooh. God's creating remnants, all that kind of stuff, like their intentions, their thoughts behind it. They called it an experiment. You know, I'd get to get a little more information on that at some point. Um, that'd be kind of cool. Maybe a character short or something of that sort, like a world of remnant type thing would be cool on that regard. I will have to say I have one disappointment with this chapter. Ugh. I'm a little disappointed with the moon. We had all of these crazy theories oh, about the moon. Maybe the gods lived on the moon. And there was this moment where, like, he did that destruction thing and everything got wiped out. I'm like, what if everyone was actually on the moon and then they ended up on Remnant after any of this kind of thought? And then all it is is the gods leaving went right through the moon and broke it apart. That's fucking epic because it, it, it's, like, it's more realistic. Yeah, it symbolizes it's... the gods leaving yes. the earth. It's huge. I agree. I agree from that point. Like, the symbolism in it is really cool and it's really meaningful. And if people actually knew and understood it would be a very powerful reminder. But, you know, just when from us fans, we've had five volumes of speculating of what the moon means and all these kind of things, and for it to just be like, well, it's destroyed because someone went right through it and nothing really happened because of it. I think it's fucking sweet. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a little bit of a letdown from a personal, oh, we set our own expectations kind of thing. Again, you okay. haven't been in the community for five years and, you know, like yeah. trying to come up with those theories. So you That's didn't just fair. have all your hopes and dreams about Aww. the moon get crushed. So. Yeah, that's fair. And then, like, even uh, then, like, it started raining down, like, debris and stuff from the moon, right? And I was like, maybe something came from that. It didn't seem to yeah, do that either. Yeah, I thought that was going to happen, too. Yeah. Holy cow. That was so good. Aspen, why didn't he just, in the beginning, share with everyone what the god told him? I mean, the god never said that was against the rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Share it! Good point. Yeah, I mean, you could leave out, uh, maybe, uh, yeah. Because you can leave out things like the relics of bringing them together and the powers they have. Maybe that's what he was trying to do with the girls. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I still, but I'm kind of with you. Like, he could have at least shared what his actual yeah. mission and that where it came from. Like, there's parts of that story that you can share Ooh. without yeah. without revealing necessarily too much powerful information to corrupt people. Oh, you're right. It would kind of corrupt having all of them. Ooh, having all of them. Ooh. I think, yeah, because like if you tell about, and again, I don't know when Salem learned about the relics. I think, I don't know if that was made super clear. Again, we'll go back and rewatch it and see if he did tell her everything in that moment. But if she hasn't known about the relics until fairly recently, then that could be a big, because it kind of makes me wonder why has she not grabbed them for the last God knows how many millennia, and yet now she seems to be after the relics. Now she's attacking the academies to get them. It's like they were out of her reach the whole time. Or maybe she didn't even know about them. And now someone let loose the secret? That's what it feels like. And that's maybe why... So the question... Because people have asked this question in the community. 
why is it such a big deal now defeating Salem? Why hasn't what happened all these last thousand years or whatever that us been been failing and has he been fighting like has there's not been chaos between him and Salem this whole time? Well, we know for a while they were kind of working co together and stuff and trying to become gods. So we don't really have a good time frame of when which happened. Like in terms of years ago and all that stuff. Um but yeah, so I'd be curious to know like when she found out about the relics and was it actually fairly recently? I think they were just fighting. They've always been fighting. Like it's not a new thing, but that she finally decided to do something bigger by attacking in this way. And that's why it feels like a big thing. I think that's still a major question that hopefully they'll answer this volume. We'll get a clear answer on. Not that we need it. I think I'm okay with them like holding back information from us if it drives the story and it keeps us asking questions later. Like there are people who are like, no, you got to tell us all of this now. I want Silver Eyes. I want background story. I want Team Stark story. I want all this stuff. Give it to me right now in one volume. I'm not like that. If they choose to hold back what exact when Salem found about the relic or why the conflict is as big as it is right now. They hold that back for a couple of times. I'd be okay with that because we got a lot of info dumps already. I was going to say, you probably feel that way because you got a whole lot of info dump. Like, So I'm okay with them holding stuff back as long as it adds value to a story. But I feel like Team Ruby's first question is gonna, should kind of be like, okay, why didn't you say all this to some degree? And why now? Why is everything coming to a head now? And where the hell have the relics been for all this time? <laughs> I think those are my three questions. The Ospin, right? I want Yang to back up a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Well, he again, like I'm not saying he probably thought he was sparing them, or he didn't want to corrupt any of them, or he did say. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. He was like, "So you think? You, do you think Leo was the first? Who betrayed him. So if, at that time, I was like, well, Salem was probably oh. the first one who betrayed him, and she kind of is. But then I also wonder did someone else betray him and give up information to Salem? That's one thing we didn't really learn in this story either, is when he created the maidens. I was thinking about that earlier. Right? Mm. And what made him create. And well, why? I'm, yeah, and why? And how long ago was it? Again, we don't have Wait. a good time scale of all this stuff. Four maidens? Yep. Didn't they have four children? Yeah. Oh, but there were boys in there. Was there? I thought they were all girls. It was like his and... I don't know. We have to go back. Maybe. I don't know. Good questions though right there, right? Whoa. Just, okay. Final thoughts. Because we're going to have to wrap this because this is running <laughs> for a while. But... <sighs> I would love a pre... Salem Ospin conflict spin off Ruby show of a world with like these legendary heroes, monsters, and people having magic. Like some of the fights and the animation and things you can do there would be so cool and badass. And it, it's such a different world than what we have in the world of Remnant right now. As a spin off, I, th I take it. I think it'd be cool. I don't know if I want to be tied to characters in that way as I am to the Ruby characters. I, I'd rather just I mean, stick to it. <laughs> you can't be afraid of new things. Come on, George. But I'm that's, just saying, I think the, the setting, the concept of a world the, where the gods are cool, there, yeah. magic for everyone, regular thing, I think that's such a cool concept. And put it into a world and a thing that we sort of kind of are familiar with, but it's so different. I think it would be really cool, and I think they've already said they wanted to do Ruby spinoffs at some point in the future. I think that's one opportunity. The other one would have to be stuff with Team Stark, but Ospin could be the main character, and they show his struggle to like defeating the castle yeah. or something. Yeah, Osmo would be a great character now to have a, a story or a spinoff series built up around. That would definitely be a cool way to do it. Anyway. Just spitballing, but I, I just say I'd love to see it. Whether that's in mangas or in books, actual spin off series, any of the, just exploring that time frame in that world would be kind of cool. All right, final closing Whoa. thoughts. Still mind blown. Mind fucked. Yeah. 
such a such a good volume so far. Holy cow! I'm so impressed with what they've done up with volume six so far. Soaking it in. Great writing, by the way, Miles and team again. Really Great cool, you guys. Really, really cool. Okay, let us know what you guys thought about all of this. Ah, uh, please do. Theorize with us. What are your thoughts? What are your theories? And oh. <laughs> yeah, we'll catch you guys when we move on to episode four. And I'm sure that we're just gonna keep going out, hitting the accelerator, and just keep going. So, uh. enjoy us on. See you guys next time.